Hey everybody, this is Brett, and today I'd like to talk to you about ceramic knives. And you know, a few months back, maybe four or five months back, I bought a ceramic knife. And I spent over a hundred dollars for it. And the sense with buying a ceramic knife is that it doesn't go dull and also that uh, you know you're cutting with something that's not going to get any metal into the food and we're all trying to get the heavy metals out of our bodies and so that made sense to me and so I've been using it and it's razor sharp but it has gotten somewhat duller over the months and then also the problem that I think with the ceramic knives is the potential for little glass fragments to come off of the edge and get into our bodies. Now I've taken really good care of this and I've been really careful with it, but guess what? Right there, and you probably can't see it with the camera, but I can, right there is a little tiny piece of glass that's broken off of this. And then right there is another one. And you know, it's not worth it, I don't think, to take the chance on a bigger piece of glass, a little bit bigger, getting into my body and causing problems that, um, that just may not be able to get fixed unless I had an operation to get it out of there somehow. And it's a little bit scary and I'm just not going to chance it. So, you know, it's your call. If you've got a ceramic knife and you want to take the chance on getting a little piece of ceramic glass in your body, you go for it, but not me. Now, some of you may be thinking, maybe he'll give me his ceramic knife. No! <laughs> We're going to hang this on the wall and maybe in a plaque and put some kind of a little thing underneath it. Don't use ceramic knives because they're dangerous. And I think I've seen another article on the internet that says the same thing, and it's just kind of a common sense thing to me. And just to add a little bit to that, I would like to say that I don't think that it's good for us to try to achieve perfection in an imperfect world. Like, for instance, at one time, I deci decided that I was going to go completely salt-free. And I mean, like, I'm going to cook all my food for myself, and I'm not going to add any salt to it, because I was thinking, and I had read in various books, that it's unnatural to add salt to your food. <laughs> well, guess what? Soon thereafter, I learned that that just wasn't going to work, and I got really, really thin, and I could talk about salt for probably an hour. Basically, salt makes you retain, and it is kind of a, a way for us to equalize our imperfections in regards to especially diet. And so... There is a perfect amount of salt for each one of us, and, you know, each one of us has to adjust that amount to their taste. And so, anyone that thinks that they can go, even a perfectionist, uh, somebody that has a clean, 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 clean diet, anyone that thinks that they can go totally, 100% salt-free, is on a pipe dream. And so, my thinking was... <laughs> imperfect because I was trying to be perfect. Another thing might be um, some people think that they can go 100% raw food and maintain their health. And I'm pretty skeptical. I don't know. And it seems to me that those people out there that I see on YouTube, the gurus, that have gone all raw, they seem to be getting too thin to me and malnourished and we'll see we'll see how that goes <laughs> maybe i'm wrong i've been wrong before but <laughs> there are so many foods that we benefit from that really have to be cooked or that we benefit from that you can only buy in a package or bottle that are already have, have already been cooked so those are just my thoughts for today 
I would recommend to stay away from these and just stick with good old uh, high carbon knives and keep them sharp and be careful. Thanks so much. Bye.